Bill Barr, former attorney general to Donald Trump, has a new book, and that means it's time to make some headlines. He's out there on MSNBC talking to Lester Holt, and he had a lot of things to say. He was saying that Donald Trump kind of full of it. Here's how that sounded. And that all this stuff was bull****. BS, and, bad word. Uh, about election fraud. Uh-oh. And uh, Bad word, too. It was fraud. wrong to be shoveling it out. You shouldn't shovel. Was. Shouldn't shovel the BS out there is what he was saying. And, you know, we were thinking about this because he used to be on that same team and he was somebody who used to say stuff like this when he was talking to somebody else over there at CNN named Wolf Blitzer. This is a, you know, sort of cheap talk yeah, to Wolf. get around the fundamental problem, yeah. which is the bipartisan commission chaired by Jimmy Carter and James Baker Liberal. said back in 2009 that mail-in voting is fraught yes. with the risk of fraud and coercion. But since then, and, there and until a this administration, no, well, sorry, I'm pipe proven. down there, Wolfie. Let me talk. Yeah, please. Pipe down. Uh, and since this, since that time, there've been in the newspapers, in networks, academic studies saying it is open to fraud and coercion. Just saying. The only time the narrative changed is after this administration came in. Yeah. But elections that have been held with mail have found substantial fraud and what? coercion. Well, what did what the heck is he talking about? Because he is sounds like somebody who used to be on the team that was shoveling the same BS that apparently he's so unhappy about in the book, saying that he told Donald Trump that there was no evidence of anything nefarious going on anywhere in the world. And this was all without merit. But there was a lot of merit when he was the attorney general, the lead and chief law enforcement official in the United States when he was investigating crimes like this one. For example, we indicted someone in Texas, 1,700 ballots collected Whoa. He from people who ha That's a lot. could vote. He made them out and voted for the person he wanted to. Filled them out. Okay? Because that I'll kind of thing happens with mail-in ballots, there are, and everyone knows But that. there are individuals. So it happens. Everyone knows it. But Bill Barr has now changed his tune. And so what is this mostly about, in my opinion? Well, the book deal, of course. This is the book. One damn thing after another is what he has written here. William Barr, number one bestseller in legal and judge biographies. Hardcover going for a cool $29.99, not even a big deal. Oh, the paperback, look at that. $37 for the paperback. Ugh. <laughs> the former attorney general provides a candid account of the historic tenures serving two vastly different presidents, George H.W. Bush and Donald Trump. Yeah, that's right. He was there for W number one before he went back for Donald Trump. Now, this is a little bit more about what the book says. The book, of course, coming out in March. Here it says ex-attorney general urges the GOP the Republican Party to move on. The book recounts confrontational meeting in the Oval Office saying Trump needed to focus on new leader. Tr uh, Republicans need to focus on new leaders. The book, some detail over from the Amazon sales page, 608 pages. That's a whopper of a book, but of course, two presidencies in there. So what do you divide that by two, 300 presidents, a president or something like that? He was the at attorney general back under Bush, largely was the result of chance. Donald Trump was deliberate. 30 years later, Barr faced an unrelenting barrage of issues like Russiagate, okay, the COVID outbreak, which, okay, civil unrest, the impeachment, the 2020 election fallout. Now this is the one that is grabbing the headlines, saying that this is another essential book to understand the Donald Trump legacies. Wall Street Journal continues, says that he writes that Donald Trump, and part of the reason why they need to, you know, quote, move on from this past bygone era of Donald Trump, saying that Donald has shown he has neither the temperament nor the persuasive powers to provide the kinds of positive leadership that is needed. It has to be positive in this country. And of course, he's not. There are rising new leaders in the party. Donald Trump is not one of them. The release of the former attorney general 600 page book is coming as Donald Trump, who remains the dominant figure, contemplates another presidential run. Said that, you know, 
Barr saying, you know, he could have just won in 2020 if, quote, he just exercised a modicum of self-restraint, moderating even a little bit of what? His pettiness. Oh, yeah. The election was not, quote, stolen, according to Mr. Barr. He says Trump lost it. Mr. Barr urges conservatives to look at, quote, an impressive array of younger candidates who share Mr. Trump's agenda, but not his, quote, erratic personal behavior. He didn't mention any of those candidates by name. But I think it's just anybody but Trump, right, is where the camp that he falls in. The memoir adds to a growing list of books. Now, this was interesting. There was a sort of connection here. The people who are publishing the book, it's scheduled for release on March 8th by William Morrow, imprint of HarperCollins. Both HarperCollins and the Wall Street Journal are owned by News Corp. Hmm. News Corp here is, uh, of course, you know, big, big entity, a lot of media conglomerates sort of under it. You can see here the Wall Street Journal is one of the major entities that is also owned by HarperCollins, as they detailed for us in the article. And so they kind of have a vested interest in selling a lot of books, don't they? They're owned by the same company. The more juicy the headline that the Wall Street Journal can print, the more books that they're going to sell for HarperCollins publishers. And so they, of course, do that. They continue on with their juicy story. They say that he's a respected figure and that he came in after they ousted Jeff Sessions, served the same job for many people, said that he was involved in uh, the Russian interference debacle. We've talked a lot about that on YouTube. Mr. Barr issued his summary of Mr. Mueller's investigative report. Wall Street Journal continues and says that he also worked for the insuring months to undermine some of the prosecutions that respond as a result of the investigation. Wall Street Journal wraps this up, says that there were motions to dismiss and said that at times he was privately frustrated by Mr. Trump's aggressive style and constant comments on the Justice Department's works. And he did, right? Donald Trump many times made comments about it. They should be doing it this way or they should be doing it that way. Unhappy with the investigation. He provides some details about a contentious meeting saying that there were a lot of questions about the presidential election, saying Donald Trump was saying, you're killing me. You're pulling the rug out from under me for not doing things the way that I wanted them done. He said that he ultimately resigned and Mr. Trump yelled, accepted. And he was very unhappy with his performance there at the White House. And so we have now Attorney General Barr, who is saying that this was not a stolen election, and that he resigned, bringing an end to his tenure in the Trump administration. Mr. Barr, no longer in government, on the outside of it, doing his very best to make sure Donald Trump doesn't run again, and if he does, doesn't succeed. What do you think about it? Let me know down in the comments below. Be sure to subscribe wherever it is you're watching this, because I look forward to seeing you on the next one.